All right, today we're going to be talking about custom errors and how you can build them in different ways. So we're going to talk about the new error constructor. We're going to talk about building factory functions and using object.create to build our own custom errors. And then also how you can, with the new cla newer class syntax, build your own custom errors. And we'll implement those in our web page here using modules. We'll talk a little bit about classes, a little bit about prototypes. So let's dive into this. Here's our simple web page, just some basic text on it. And you can see here, nothing much in the body. My script tag is going to load my main script. And I've got two things here. Type equals module, which is going to allow me to import modules. And doing that, it's going to make the main script, app.js, wait until that other module has been read and loaded. If I've got an import statement, which I do. Defer means wait until the DOM is ready. So this content's going to be read and the module is going to be imported before our script actually starts to run. So I have here a basic syntax, the basic syntax for a standard generic error. You want to create an error on your page for something. This is how you do it. New error. So you call the error function. New in front of it means it's a constructor function. So you're building an error object. I'm saving it in this variable. And then I can throw that at any point in my code that I want. Once this is created, uh, as long as it's in scope, I will be able to throw that error. It will be caught because I wrapped it inside of a try catch. And I'm just going to write this out. So when I click on the body, I'm going to see this error show up with this message right here in my console. So there we go. I click. And here is my error object like that. So there is an, my variable E, which is an error object. It has a message, which is what I passed into the constructor function. And there's the string that is the stack saying, this is where the error happened. The prototype for the error right here, this is the error constructor function. So this is the function that we actually called to create our error. And inside the prototype object, there, which is attached to this constructor function, we have these two properties, message and error, uh, message and name. Message, that's the one that's inside the prototype. This message is the one that's in my variable, the, the actual error instance that I created. This is the one that's inside the prototype and name. Well, that's the type of error that we're dealing with is the name. So we want to build our own custom one. That's the standard error right here. I want to build something a little bit different. All right, so we're importing here at the top of the line because we said type equals module, we're allowed to do this. We can import some object, something from errors.js, which is right here. And what I did was I built, just to start off with a factory function that's building standard error object. So ES5 syntax, there's nothing here that won't run in ES5. Uh, we've got a function, we're passing in a message and that means we're going to be able to say new Steve error and then some message we're going to pass that in that's going to be passed into this message variable and my constructor function what am I going to return as long as I use new this thing's going to want to return an object here's the object that we're returning we're going to say object create to create a brand new object of our very own and I'm using this syntax instead of just an object literal because I want to attach the prototype for the actual error function. So when we said new error previously, we're getting that prototype and we're attaching it. Then these are the other properties that we're going to have inside of the object we're creating, name and message. So we're creating our own name and message. The name is going to be Steve error instead of error. And then the message is going to be whatever we passed in here to the function. So this sum message would be the value of the message property. All right, so that's just a standard ES5 syntax for creating one. So this is a custom error that we're creating. So let's say we're going to create an error, Steve equals new, this thing right here that we imported, Steve error. And then we have to pass in a message. And then we're going to repeat this syntax exactly. 
except this is Air Steve now instead of just the standard error. So we've created a Steve error. And this could be called anything at all that you want. And so I'm going to write that out on the screen. When I click, there's the original error. And here's this new one. If we open that up, there's a new error. The name is Steve error, the message that we passed in. Okay, simple enough. The class syntax, it's actually, I find a little bit easier to read with the class syntax. One of the reasons why they added that. And let's do a more practical real world example for the class version. So this is a way that you can create a custom error with a class, and then you can have this file that you import in your website for all your scripts. Anytime there's gonna be a network error, we'll say, we can just import this thing. So I will create something called network error. And I'm gonna use this every time I do a fetch. And it's gonna be a class that extends error. So I'm building something, some kind of object that extends error. I'm doing the exact same thing that I'm doing here, really. It's just a slightly different syntax. It's a little bit easier to read. It's a little bit less verbose. And it needs to have a constructor function. We're going to pass something into here. Since we're dealing with network errors, like if I'm doing a fetch and I'm getting, having a failure, instead of passing in a message, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this thing receive a response object. That's what we're going to pass into the constructor. So you can imagine if you had a fetch call, does the fetch, and it brings back that response object. I'm just going to pass that response object here into my constructor. And then inside my constructor, because we're saying extends, we do have to call the constructor for error. And inside of here, we should pass a message. The error constructor is expecting a message. Well, that response object that we're passing in, if you do any fetch calls, you know that there is a status text property, which is the message that came back from the server. So it's the message that's built into the response object. Okay, so that is a requirement. Whenever you extend a class, you have to call the super method. Now inside of here, I'm just going to create those other properties. So we'll say this dot name, this dot message. Those are the two standard ones. And I can say this is going to be response dot status text. Just like that. The name, I'm going to call it network error. Makes sense. That's the name of our class. And we now, we could in here create custom properties. So I could create a property called Bob, which has the value hello. And we can determine if it's enumerable, writable, and so on. All those things. There we go. So just like this, we can create properties inside of this custom error object. We're going to do that with, let's say, code. I want to have my response.status. That's the status code. We've got the text. Why not have the code available to, it, to us as well? And why not just take the entire response object and make the entire response object something that's available to us anytime there's a network error? Maybe I want to get the URL. Maybe I want to get the status code. Maybe there's a whole bunch of other things that we want to have from the response object. All right. So there we have it. This is our new class version. We've built a custom error and we just have to export that. There we go. Now I have a reusable network error and my reusable Steve error. Back in my import, we have to add that in there as well so we can use it. Now, as I was saying before, we're going to pretend to do a fetch. And easiest way to do that is just to create our own custom response object. So let's do that. Let's create a response and pretend like this is coming back from the server. There's nothing inside of it. The body of it is null. And then inside of here, we have to define what the status is. And let's use a, an HTML status code, uh, which is not actually defined. So 452, it's an error code, but it's not defined what it is. We can say status text. This can be anything that we want. There we go. There's a status code and a status message. 
And if you want, you can define headers inside of here as well. There we go. All right, so I have my own custom response object. We're going to deal with it again in much the same way by throwing an error. Uh, or we could, sorry, we could deal with it by throwing an error with our network error, or we can simulate a fetch. And a fetch really is just a promise. So I'm going to say promise.resolve, and I'm going to pass in this. So this is going to be the return value from my promise, much in the same way that when you do fetch URL, inside the first then, you're getting the response from the fetch. If I do that here, there we go. This is the exact same thing as a fetch. This is my first then function that would follow the fetch. And inside of here, we've got a response object. So I can say, hey, you know what? Same as I always would. If not response OK, meaning there was a problem, we can throw new network error. And instead of just passing a message, I mean, this is saying response can pass in anything, but we want to actually pass in the res response object, this one, the one right here, the one that we defined. So let's do that. And if we make it here, we shouldn't see this, but if we do, if we ever did, this is the message that would appear in the console. We shouldn't see that. And then inside my catch, I'm doing the same sort of thing as I did up above. I'm just going to console log my error object. All right. So there we have it. Created a response and we're pretending to do a fetch. My response object, we're going to check if the response is not okay. And if it's not, I'm going to throw a network error that will contain our response object. All right. So clicking on here, there we go. There's the first error that was built with new error. Here's the second one built with object create. That was the one we talked about already. That's the Steve error. And here is our network error. So we've got code 452. The name is this. And there's a property called response, which is the actual, the full response object. You can see there's a, a URL property that's defined inside of there. There was no actual fetch. So URL is going to be empty. But we have access to all the different things that would be part of a normal response. And this, when we actually do fetch calls, is going to give us a lot of useful information. And now we have a reusable network error, a custom network error that we can use with any fetch call. So I hope that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.